In historic times, we haven't had a great earthquake. In geologic history, we have evidence of a number of tsunamis hitting uh, Oregon and the whole Cascadia coast, mostly local ones. That really starts with Native American legends. Tribes up, all up and down the coast, First Nations in, on the Canadian side, and then our tribes have uh, legends about uh, the last earthquake. It sort of transformed into a, a legend, really. It was the, the legend of Thunderbird and Whale and a great battle of the two great gods, and it involved a lot of shaking of the ground and washing away of villages and things like that. The story has, over the last 20 years or so, has evolved into a really tight story with marine and land evidence and the Native American stories and, and even evidence in Japan of a tsunami that arrived there. And so it's all come together to make a pretty tight story about uh, past tsunamis in the Holocene the last 10,000 years ago. So every, every 250 years, roughly, we have one somewhere in Cascadia. And it's, uh, the southern part gets them more frequently than the northern part, but um, that's the uh, sort of a thumbnail of the geologic evidence. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves caused by an underwater earthquake, landslide, or volcanic eruption. A tsunami is not a single wave, but a series of waves, also known as a wave train. Tsunami waves can be very long, up to 60 miles, and can be as far as one hour apart. They are able to cross entire oceans without great loss of energy. Where the ocean is deep, tsunamis can travel unnoticed on the surface at speeds up to 500 miles an hour, crossing an ocean in a day or less. Scientists are able to calculate the arrival time of a tsunami in different parts of the world based on their knowledge of water depths, distances, and when the event that generated them occurred. One misconception about tsunamis is that the first wave is the most devastating. However, the first wave in a tsunami is not necessarily the most destructive. Flooding can extend inland by a thousand feet or more. The enormous energy of a tsunami can lift giant boulders, flip vehicles, and destroy buildings. Many witnesses have said a tsunami sounds like a freight train. Earthquakes happen when plates move with respect to each other because the friction and stress at the edges of the plates prevent them from slipping smoothly at their boundaries. In the ocean, for an earthquake to develop a tsunami, there must be a vertical movement. Energy accumulates in the overriding plate until it exceeds the frictional forces between the two stuck plates. When this happens, the overriding plate snaps back into an unrestrained position. The sudden motion is the cause of the tsunami because it gives an enormous shove to the overlying water. At the same time, inland areas of the overriding plate are suddenly lowered. The moving wave begins traveling out from where the earthquake has occurred. Some of the water travels out and across the ocean basin, and at the same time, water rushes towards land to flood the recently lowered shoreline. There are four phases for a tsunami. Generation is the likelihood of these events and how big the hazard will be at sea. Propagation is how the wave moves over the ocean and towards the land. Inundation implies what happens when the water goes over the land and interacts with the environment, and mitigation focuses on how to reduce the damage and recover more quickly. This facility, which was um, in large part funded by the National Science Foundation, we also have some historic funding from the Office of Naval Research, um, was designed to be the singular tsunami research facility in the United States. So uh, essentially, the National Science Foundation decided to put a lot of money into one facility to be able to build a very large scale facility. And when they did that, we agreed to share our facility. We are open to people from universities across the United States sharing our facility um, and doing tsunami research, which is a unique setup. Most, a lot of other laboratories on the campus um, are uh, held within schools or departments. We should care about an upcoming natural disaster, a seismic event, um, because all of Western Oregon is likely to be affected by a large-scale seismic event. So off the Oregon coast, we have a very active uh, subduction zone. That's where an oceanic plate is diving underneath a continental plate. Um, that's what creates our volcanic mountain range, the Cascade Mountains. It's why Mount Hood explodes. There's about a 40% chance of a large seismic event and about a 9% chance of an extra large seismic event in the next 50 years. And either of those events is going to create long duration shaking felt all the way across western Oregon 
and a large-scale tsunami inundation that will be felt along the Oregon coast.